Good morning. Um, just a couple things to, to uh, point out before we get started. Uh, first, I, I need to make a, a correction and an apology on our uh, slides up here. Because of similar names, we have things, we have things a little mixed. So it says on one of the slides that all the flowers are given by Ralph and Marsha Usak. It is actually by their parents, Ralph and Amanda Usak, uh, in, in, uh, in celebration of Amanda Corna's uh, high school graduation from North Carolina. So, First granddaughter. Huh? First granddaughter. First granddaughter, yes. And, so, um, and also then, uh, we have several slides up here about the unmasked uh, program that we're offering, and I would ask Pastor Matthews to come up and, and tell us a little bit about that. Good morning. Good to see everybody beginning to uh, come back to church, and I've been following on the screen, so welcome to all of you. Good to see you on this side. Uh, I am Pastor David Matthews. Many of you know me very well. Some of you don't know me at all. Uh, I served as an assistant pastor here about 100 years ago, uh, but uh, my wife Barbara and I are members of the congregation, and we're going to begin a, uh, a new opportunity. I'm not quite sure whether to call it a class or not, but it begins today uh, right down the hall in the lounge, and uh, we're going to call it Unmasked. Uh, I'm far enough away from you, and I've already been inoculated. Uh, you're welcome to come. It's simply going to be an opportunity for us to talk about this whole transition that we're all in the midst of, have been going through, and are going through. Uh, just a time to get together to talk and share with each other and and get acquainted again with each other. Uh, we've all, uh, those of us sitting in the pew, uh, have been mostly watching the backs of everybody's heads, other than the pastors, and those of us on Zoom see each other face to face, but uh, it's not like just sitting down and, and talking with each other. So it's gonna be an opportunity over the next eight weeks, right after church, uh, and we'll be finished at 12 o'clock, so you'll be able to get off for lunch, but time to get kind of to know each other again, have some mutual support, uh, share some of our joys and challenges, and uh, be reacquainted as we go through this transition time. If you've been fully inoculated, uh, it's up to you whether you want to come and wear a mask or not. Uh, you're welcome to come. If you um, haven't been fully inoculated and need to wear a mask, uh, we're going to let that uh, decision up to you. So welcome, right after church, down the hall, first of eight sessions. Uh, you don't have to sign up for all the sessions. Come when you're able. Good to see you all. Let's please stand and join together for the order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, 
Amen. God of all saints, God of all sinners, hear our prayer. We would like to be saints, holy, good, patient, and loving, but we end up more like sinners, failing, selfish, and mean. You, O oh Lord, see us as human, beloved, flawed, trying, failing in some things, and succeeding in others. In all of this, forgive the wrong we have done and bless the good we have accomplished. Keep on loving us and helping us and molding us more and more into the image of Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Hear the good news. In Christ we are forgiven. We are set free to go out into the world to be the loving, gracious, hopeful people of God. Hallelujah. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer for the day. O oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth, that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. You can have a seat, and it's now time for the children's sermon. Good morning. So I'm going to tell a little story today, and I'm going to use a piece of paper to help me tell the story. So once upon a time, there was a person who wanted to find God. So they decided to go look for God. And the first thing they did was they got on a boat. And they sailed all over the world looking for God in their boat. They did not find God on the oceans and the seas. So they landed their boat and they built a house. And they thought, well, maybe if we go all the way up to the top of the house and look around, we can see God. So they went all the way up to the peak and they looked around. Didn't see God anywhere. And I thought, oh, this isn't working. Where else can we look for God? So the person decided to get on an airplane. And they got on an airplane And they flew all over the place. They flew and flew and flew and they looked everywhere. They flew over mountains and they flew in the valleys. Couldn't find God. So they said, well, maybe God isn't on Earth. Maybe we need to go to outer space. So they called Elon Musk. No, they, uh, <laughs> they made a spaceship. And they flew up into space. And they looked around in space and they didn't see God. So they came back down to Earth and they were pretty disappointed. Didn't know where to find God. And so they just kind of started to pray. And they went to church and they heard about God and they discovered that God was actually found in Christ. And that Christ had promised to be with them always, whether it was on the ocean or in the house or up in the air or even in outer space, Christ was going to be there because Christ was in them and with them. And that Christ was working through them. And they didn't have to go looking for God. God was already with them. And that made them very happy. And they decided that if that was true, then wherever they went, God went. And so they decided to take God with them and tell people about him all the time. The end.
Good morning. The first reading is from Ezekiel chapter 17. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live in the shades of its branches and will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree, I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken, I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thank be to God. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter. So, we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others. But we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to your consciences. We are not commanding, excuse me, commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For we, if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died, and he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we, now, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. Please stand and join in the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O oh Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stock, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. So, kind of a familiar parable today, and there's been many ways in which the parable of the mustard seed has been understood and talked about. You're probably familiar with some of those. Um, we've heard that 
Just like the mustard seed starts small and grows big, so your faith can start small and grow big if you tend to it. Uh, sometimes we talk about how very large things have small beginnings, and so don't get discouraged um, because if, if you exercise your faith in small ways, God can even use that to do great things. Now, there's nothing wrong with these explanations. They teach us about the kingdom, about faith, about God. But parables like this aren't really meant to teach or instruct or enlighten as much as they are meant to, to um, change things, to transform things, to, to transform us. So I guess what I've been thinking about this week is that maybe those familiar ways of looking at the, this parable are just a little bit too safe. Jesus and his parables are earth-shaking. They're subversive. They, they mess things up, and rightly so. See, the thing about mustard seeds in the ancient world is that while some varieties were used as spice and some had medicinal uses, mostly mustard was considered a weed, a pesky, even dangerous weed. Why? Because wild mustard is incredibly hard to control. And once it takes root, it can take over the whole garden, even, even a whole field. So almost no one would even think about sowing mustard in your garden. People just would not plant it. If they wanted mustard, they'd go out into the wild and find it growing someplace out away from the farms, on a hillside somewhere, or an abandoned field, and it would be taking over the whole area. So for us, take your favorite garden variety weed, crabgrass, dandelions, wild onion, that's pretty much what Jesus is comparing the kingdom of God to. Oh, and that part about the birds seeking refuge in the shrubs of the mustard, we usually find some comfort in that, right? God providing a safe place, a, a place of, of um, cover and protection, of shelter from the elements. But, Think about it in terms of another parable that Jesus told about the sower who tossed seeds everywhere and the seeds that fell on the path, the birds came and ate those seeds. So they didn't grow or produce anything. What if the birds flocking to the mustard plant suggests that once mustard shrubs take root, all kinds of things can happen, including the sudden presence of undesirables. Think about it. If the birds come to your garden to eat mustard seeds, they're going to eat all the other seeds, too. This makes the parable a little more ominous, dangerous, earth-shaking. John Dominic Crossan writes, the point, in other words, is not just that the mustard plant starts as a proverbial sm small seed and grows into a shrub. It is that it tends to take over where it's not wanted, that it tends to get out of control, and that it tends to attract birds within cultivated areas where they're not particularly desired. And that, said Jesus, is what the kingdom of God was like. Not like the mighty cedar of Lebanon and not quite like a common weed. More like a pungent shrub with dangerous takeover properties. Something you would want in only small and carefully controlled doses. If you could control it. That's the point. The kingdom Jesus proclaims isn't something we can control. 
And it's definitely not safe. Not, that is, if we're even slightly satisfied with the way things are. Now the, the kingdom comes to take over, to overturn, to transform the kingdoms of this world. But if you can imagine something more than the status quo of scarcity, fear, limited justice, and all the rest of the stuff that we deal with every day, then maybe Jesus saying that God's kingdom is infiltrating the kingdom of the world offers a word of hope. A hope that will entice, prod, or poke you into working toward the vision of the kingdom of God that he proclaims. Hope is like that. It doesn't just cheer you up, it moves you to action. I read somewhere that hope is the only thing more powerful than fear. That's what Jesus offers, the powerful hope of God's kingdom coming. And while we're certainly not able to control that, or even summon it or make it happen, we can actively anticipate it. We can look for it. Maybe we can even help its unexpected growth. So here comes the dangerous part. I'm sending you out this week with a mission. You have work to do this week. I want you to go out and look for those places where God's kingdom is sneaking in, breaking in, spreading out, or taking over little corners of the world. I want you to find where God's kingdom is infiltrating the kingdom of the world. And I want you to look for hope for that powerful hope of Jesus that changes lives. Whether it's big or small, find those places where God is creating hope. Places where we can see and sense God at work. And when and where you can, I want you to help the kingdom come. I want you to help the hope grow. I want you to share those life-changing moments of God with other people. Maybe even make this a summer project that you do for the next two or three months. And maybe, if we all do this, by the end of summer, we'll have a harvest of testimony and of faith that reflects this wild, uncontrollable, but oh so useful mustard seed that Jesus is talking about. Amen.
Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for pastors, bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God as they invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, protect your creatures that are mistreated. Restore valleys, mountains, and pastures, and still and running waters. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of world leaders, international peace workers, and our military who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, let your gentleness be known among those who are ill. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life. We receive from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Holy, holy, holy Lord, the earth is full of your glory. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. Give strength to your people, O Lord. Give us, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Blessed are you, O Lord, heaven, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For those of you who are receiving communion at home, please take your bread, the body of Christ given for you.
and now your cup, the blood of Christ, shed for you. For those of you who are communing here, please come and receive. The table is ready. 